Belts down, boys. We're on. Now's one of those times. Pays to be the strong, silent type. Gentlemen, we're a key hole. Guns out. Stay quiet. Identify. I'm gonna drink some chocolate milk. Night vision, NVGs, nods. Used by the world's most modern militaries, these little devices have changed warfare forever. Since their introduction onto Panther tanks in 1943, they've gotten smaller, cheaper, well, relatively, and also have slipped their way into movies, media, and video games. Video games portray night vision in different ways. In some, it's a magical device that can penetrate any darkness. Maybe it can see through obstacles. The developer went for realism, artistic style, or the developer just didn't know anything about them. So, do night vision goggles really make the bwee sound? Do you go blind wearing these if someone points a flashlight at you? Do they make me look cool? After this video, you'll look at night vision in games differently because I think some did it much better than others. What is night vision other than a green film grain filter with a boost to the brightness setting? What makes night vision a worthwhile feature to add to a game? And what can a developer do to enhance the utilization of such a device? These night vision goggles make it too easy. In video games, night vision goggles come in many shapes and sizes. In Splinter Cell, Sam Fisher has a fictional triple tube night vision goggle that allows him to sneak into the darkest of AOs specialized for close quarters. In Halo 3 ODST, the rookie utilizes a digital night vision overlay inside his visor that detects enemies and highlights them for heightened combat awareness and the sick ambient vibe. In DayZ, night vision gives your post-apocalyptic survivor the ability to stealthily stay aware of their surroundings for twice as much time as other players, rewarding your survivor with nighttime travel, sneaky midnight looting, and stealthy combat that nobody else can even do. Ready or not, Ground Branch Zero Hour specializing in CQB realism go for a much more grounded, realistic take, weighing the pros and cons of night vision use in a simulated CQB fashion. Some of those were totally fictional, and some were not. But in terms of technological diversity, that's not too far from the real world. There's different night vision technologies of all shapes and sizes, analog, digital, thermal, and hybrid. The most common in circulation today, the humble PVS-14. Rugged, combat proven, and simple with one tube that fits over one eye. 40 degree field of view, on off and IR floodlight switch, two AA batteries, and a manual gain knob. Though diving into the deeper areas of this tech is where it gets most interesting. Other forms of real life nods include digital night vision, Basically, cameras with their IR filters removed and lots of work done to increase their low light ability and latency. Thermal, shit's just stupid magic. Striker turrets can spot a man at two miles in pitch black nighttime. It's, it's, it's stupid, dude. Thermal's crazy. Thermal's gotten super well simulated in video games too because it's just simple and easy to do. These devs are getting these really close to real life, including Thermal's limitations. And last but not least, hybrid systems that combine two or more spectrums like infrared, night vision, and thermal radiation to create a dual image mixing classic night vision with a thermal overlay. Rare to see in games, but cool as hell when implemented correctly. We'll be discussing all major form of night vision in games in this video, but let's return to good old Greeny. Shadows down. Good shots, hermanos. No moon, that's good. Going to night vision. The proliferation of night vision available to the average civilian or game developer has grown exponentially in the past 20 years. Back in the 90s, night vision in movies and TV was rarely ever filmed through a tube and there wasn't a website called YouTube to inform designers of what these actually looked like. Usually, night vision was a green filter with thin horizontal lines like an old interlaced TV, maybe a dash of grain and glowing enemies? This was actually a big trend that night vision kept for a long time in games. Up until 2009's Modern Warfare, for some reason, realistic night vision portrayed in the early 2000s games just made enemies glow in the dark? 
Did developers get night vision confused with thermal vision? Was this a quality of life change for the gamer as we used to play on 480p 20 inch TVs? Uh, yeah, see how the enemies are glowing? Yeah, Super that's- Super common thing in these old games. Why did that explode? <laughs> Maybe. I, I think the answer lies somewhere in the middle. Some developers implement night vision as a utility with realistic situational effectiveness, and some treat it as just a check mark required for a stealth mission to occur. In 2017's Ghost Recon Wildlands, the night vision just amplifies bright areas, but ignores dark areas? You know, the areas I'm trying to see? And a lot of AAA games fall into this, this trap of being not even dark at nighttime. So when you turn your night vision on, all the filters come on and it just makes it harder to see. See, for night vision to be useful, the environment has to actually be dark. Darkness is, in my opinion, a requirement for immersive night gameplay. It's the reason why Western audiences are flocking to Stalker Anomaly for that true survival horror experience. Why Tarkov's night combat is uniquely exhilarating. Why Outlast's camera battery being limited just crushes the player's comfort down to pee my pants mode. These moments of darkness or moments of nighttime are a whole different ball game when it comes to combat strategy, survival, camouflage, evasion, movement. It's a haunting situation where your senses have been made so ineffective that hostiles can literally touch you by accident. Ask John Stryker Meyer about the time when an NVA soldier grabbed his boot in the dark, or my buddy Steve when he accidentally talked to a bush. I literally spent about 10 seconds talking to a bush because I thought it was you. Was like, There's no way he left me. I was like, oh, this bush is moving. It's probably, he's probably like right there, like trying to do hand signals. So I like took my glasses and I was like, duck, duck. I was like, I'm by myself. <laughs> we have an instinctive, unavoidable fear of the dark, and to be born in the era of humanity that has solved that fear and made that solution available to the everyday civilian is pretty neat. To have it represented in so many games across all genres from survival horror to simulation is also neat. And there's a bunch of strategy and science behind these little tubes that makes them a sandbox for developers to make cool stuff happen. And I think in a whole, most games underestimate just how important these little things are at setting the tone and feel of a covert mission. In Modern Armor 3, the near realistic night vision gives an eerie tone to any night op. In a certain operation, 50 players, including myself, were able to fight against 150 insurgent players because our nods just gave us that big of an advantage. We focused on staying in the shadows from the moonlight, avoiding light sources like street lamps and car fires. Night vision gave us the ability to attack effectively in a situation where we were outmanned three to one. You can ask any armor player what fighting against night vision users is like, and they're probably just gonna start crying. Roach, coming to you from the other side. Sergeant, let's kill the power. Put these guys in the dark. Kill them power. Modern Warfare 2019's night vision goggles also have a fictional light meter, telling you just how bright your surroundings are, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Straight from the original Splinter Cell, which took the same idea from the 1998 game Thief, which didn't even have night vision goggles, though that'd be cool. But talking about Splinter Cell, when I turn on night vision, does it make the sound? This mic is hypersensitive at this distance, so you can hear that tiny whine in the background. But you can't hear it from farther than two feet away. Now, another question that games get wrong is, can you aim down sights of a rifle with night vision. With iron sights, it's impossible. The large aperture of the lens makes for a very short range of focus, like a wide open camera lens, meaning you're either focused up close, blurring the background, or focused to the background, blurring what's up close. Choose one. Neither focus setting allows for iron sight aim. The thing is, red dots and hollow sights can lower their brightness enough to be used with night vision. But still, the best way to use night vision up to about 150 meters is with an IR laser. All you have to do is just put the IR laser onto a target. They can't even see it unless they also have night vision, and then you just pull the trigger. It's as easy as that. The most popular game that showcased this type of aiming to wide audiences was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. And in this mission, in the Clearhouse mission in particular, uh, it also is one of the first examples of white phosphor night vision goggles in a AAA shooter game. Six, move into the first floor. 
Welcome to Modern Warfare. Out with the green and in comes blue, or in this case, white. A new type of phosphor that's used in night vision goggles. White phosphor night vision goggles are pretty close to greens, except they just are a different type of phosphor that has different luminosity across the spectrum. On the left here, you see the P45, the white phosphor emits color all over the spectrum, while P43 only emits green. So cool, it emits more light and different parts of spectrum, making more of a white-ish image than green, that's all, right? Well, actually, this goes into a very in-depth science of the physics of our eyes and how we see. See, we see with scotopic and photopic vision. Scotopic vision only uses your rods to see, meaning that objects are visible, especially in the dark, but they'll appear black and white. This is why we can see in the dark, but when it is dark, we usually can't identify color very well. Uh, whereas photopic vision uses cones, it's a lot less light sensitive, but it provides color for us. The thing is, photopic vision and scotopic vision are sensitive in different parts of the color spectrum. Photopic, the one that allows us to see color, is most sensitive around the color green. And scotopic is most sensitive around the color blue. Scotopic being the one that's three times more sensitive to light emission happens to line up pretty dang close over most of the colors emitted from white phosphor, activating the rods in your eyes and allowing you to see a much clearer image without emitting as much light. After going through that entire explanation, you have the full right to hit me with a nerd emoji in the comment section. And there's even a later mission in the game where you have to avoid light sources, sneak around patrols, and infiltrate a complex any way you want. I'll help you stay hidden. Walking around this place with a suppressed Glock and some toilet paper tubes on my head just never felt better. You constantly have your IR luminator on these missions, creating that glow on up close objects, but none of the bad guys have nods, so we should be fine, right? Uh oh. A lot of these non milsim games have some sort of infrared illumination for the night vision, which isn't unusual for like house clearing in extremely low light. In real life, you can enter a room that may not have any light for the night vision to amplify. Using an infrared floodlight, you can illuminate that room for yourself while still being perfectly dark to anyone without night vision. You might not think you have it on in something like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, but fun fact, look at a reflective surface and you'll see the reflection of the IR light helping guide your way from 10 feet up in the air behind your right shoulder. You can also spot the same exact thing in Metro Exodus, IR Illuminator in the mirror, always watching, but it makes more sense because it's first person. But I just think that the Ghost Recon floating camera behind you with the floating spotlight's a little silly. See, but when someone shines an infrared light or laser, it only emits in the infrared spectrum. And so if your enemy doesn't have nods, they won't see it. But if they do have nods, they'll spot you. Flashback to my buddy Sean and I testing out the Call of Duty toy NVGs, and yeah, you're basically casting a giant spotlight out in front of you, just only in the infrared spectrum. So that's why in any situation, other than directly needing, you know, light for illuminating a target, or lasing to acquire that target with your rifle, operators keep these lasers and illuminators off as much as possible when dealing with enemies who might also have the tech. But this doesn't mean that operators just quit using their lights and lasers as soon as they find, you know, an enemy force of night vision. Most laser devices have a high power and low power setting as sometimes you want to designate a target without creating a lightsaber across a valley. This is actually simulated extremely well in the ITN mod for Arma 3. You can pick from different peck boxes and illuminators. You can actually turn the switch through the settings on it. You can go wide beam or narrow beam, IR or visual red laser. You can even turn, like twist the IR illuminator just like real life to IR or white light. It is it's just so cool. Night vision can be simulated so far in other details that it reaches a point where one might need to be even trained on the dynamics of night vision before they play a game. Arma Op a few weeks back, a player using a night vision goggle crossed around a corner to see a light approaching him. Knowing that the enemy insurgents had no night vision goggles and only flashlights, he knew that this flashlight must have been enemy. Light comes around the corner, player opens fire, and kills a teammate. The light was not white light, but infrared from another teammate's IR illuminator on their rifle. When looking through night vision, there is zero way to distinguish the difference between colors, visible, or IR light. You're seeing a monotone image. So by not lifting his night vision and manually checking if the light still existed, the player deemed the infrared light as white light and pulled the trigger. And therein lies the thing with these life hack devices. They are not perfect. They have quirks and limitations. And for smart use of them, you've got to have training or experience. With this whole colorblind problem comes an issue I'm surprised that a lot of games and a lot of mods for games haven't solved. On a two-dimensional screen, 
How do you simulate goggles? Unless you're wearing eye cups to hide that light that splashes against your eyes from the tube, you have peripheral vision on almost all forms of night vision goggle in some way. Some goggles don't even cover half of your vision, but in game, cover all of your vision like this. Example, A, B, and C. One tube to one eye, one tube to two eyes, and two tubes to two eyes. Different housings in night vision all have their own reasons and use cases. Earlier, cheaper designs and newer, nicer ones. But how is this simulated in a video game? With a PBS 14 on my right eye, would it be on the right side of the screen or the center? A lot of games simulate it in different ways, but these are all different problems with different solutions. Using Beef's MVG mod for Stalker Anomaly, we can simulate this difference and test out how we feel about it. After a while, I actually kind of got used to this and started to kind of like it. This portrayal of PBS 14 is by far the most realistic I've seen in a video game. And this is all for a mod for a 2007 video game. I mean, it's really good. You could look through the nod without having to rely on IR illumination. You can manually adjust the gain for bright and dark areas, and the visual noise and poor light amplification remind me of a lower end Gen 3 or maybe Gen 2 tube. And I haven't even mentioned, it directly allows you to differentiate color out of your left side of the screen. So if this was the night vision goggle that the man was using in the arma op that team killed his buddy, this portrayal of night vision would have allowed him to simply turn his head and figure out that the light was not white light, but that it was infrared. In Soccer Gamma, as you progress north and find rarer parts, you can craft these parts together at your workbench to upgrade your night vision from a PVS-14 style tube to dual tubes and then quad night vision. And each version adds a nice uplift to light amplification, resolution, and lower noise. There's even the detail where raising the gain of the tube adds more of that white noise that sparkles around the screen. Either that's accidental or Beef really knows his stuff with this mod because that's exactly how the real life ones work. So with the PVS-14, you'd probably say that the side set goggle looks a little weird, right? But think about it. Is it any weirder than night vision in third person games? I mean, think about it. How to get up there? <laughs> yeah, where's, how's, who's holding it? Insurgency, Sandstorm, Tarkov, these games offer higher in night vision when either the player progresses through the game or pays a higher price. Sandstorm is pretty well done with lots of bloom and halo effects that real tubes have and you have the option to spin one more loadout point to upgrade from older single tube nods with a grainy picture to the newer, clearer quad nods, as well as for one more point, an option for multicolor night vision. I don't know if this exists, but I'm not sure. Digital maybe? That's because I'm using a night vision camera. To give you a sort of an idea of what's going on here, this is what it looks like through a GoPro. As you can see, look at me, Ooga Booga, I'm a scary nighttime man, and then we go back to night vision. Hey, look at that, you can see me again. But how would a game simulate the feeling of a night vision goggle perfectly? The weird feeling that comes on after you don a PVS-14 with one eye seeing through the dark and the other effectively blind. There's not any game that simulates both eyes simultaneously, just one image on one monitor, right? Or wait a second, is there? I'm wearing a goggle on my head that gives me two separate viewpoints at the same time, I'm wearing a goggle on my head that gives me two separate viewpoints at the same time. Hmm. You can't simulate night vision perfectly. You just can't. But virtual reality gets really close. In games like VTOL VR, flying around with functional depth perception is pretty cool, but even cooler when under nods. I can actually see the different tubes at slightly different angles here from eye to eye, giving slightly different coverage to each eye like a pano bridge night vision setup. And I can also see around the tubes to read my aircraft's instruments or check the color of light sources around me. In Tactical Assault VR, the night vision closes me into a smaller field of view, meaning just like in real life, to fully check my surroundings requires physical movement of my entire head to bring the those 40 degrees of vision to whatever I need to see instead of just glancing left and right with my eyes like I would during the day. I'm quite surprised that I haven't found a VR shooter that dives into this tangent of simulation with all the different types of night vision out there. VR shooters could do so well and I can't find a single one that put in the time more than just a green filter gamma boost. Imagine being able to gradually lower your nod, see the housing as you lower it, being able to actually see out the sides and below the goggle for better spatial awareness. <sighs> And unfortunately, it seems like the VR shooter market has just stagnated post-COVID pretty bad, so I don't see any games soon really pushing the envelope on night vision simulation anytime soon. But one thing that games have done pretty well for a while now in terms of night vision is thermal technology. Target. 
Thermal is scary. You ever played DayZ mod when there was the AS50 thermal scope in the game? Knowing if your server had that gun in the spawn list was terrifying alone. The idea of in perfect darkness, some dude who didn't even hack the game can actually see you glowing in the dark. Bro, you glowing. Thermal is hard to counter. Break line of sight, maybe wear a ghillie suit or anti-thermal poncho thing to negate all the thermal radiation you emit at all times that you can't stop. You can't just stop your body from emitting heat. I've played airsoft with thermals and against thermals before. I've hunted with them as well, and it's impossible to sneak around the dark without them finding you. They don't rely on any ambient light, so you can be in a forest it covered by thick brush on a new moon night covered by extreme overcast clouds and still can be spotted by thermals even if a tiny bit of your body is exposed through holes in foliage. In video games, Tarkov is easily the most realistic thermal recreation I've ever seen. From the Reap IR to the FLIR scope, these showcase extremely well both the power and limitations of thermals. Thermals are digital devices. They have sensors and processors inside to build the image for you, unlike the more analog technology, the older technology that is in night vision. This means everything that cameras are limited by in modern day, handheld thermals are limited by too low resolution, rolling shutter, low frame rate, which means detection with these handheld or weapon mounted thermals is easy, but observation is difficult. This is why thermal still hasn't replaced good old greening when it comes to head mounted night vision. For patrolling and general combat, it's just less reliable, much more difficult to understand the image that you're looking at while moving, and it burns through batteries like an Xbox controller. When you scope in on an unknown contact, you're asking multiple questions before taking that shot. Is there something different here? Am I looking at a person? If it is a person, where exactly is he? How far is he? Is he looking at me? Is he holding a weapon? Is he wearing the blue armband my team is wearing? Can I see his head? Will I be able to hit a headshot? You might not be able to answer all these questions like you'd be able to with a standard scope, but would a standard scope be able to answer any one of those questions on a pitch black dark night? Would a night vision scope? Thermal will at least answer the most important question of them all, which is, is there something different here? Whether it be a rabbit or a person, Thermal finds life in the dark. Arma 3 is a great example of just how effective high-end thermal technology is, simulating high-end scope systems that are semi-futuristic and vehicle-mounted thermals with extreme levels of zoom and resolution. In DCS, thermal is simulated enough to allow A-10 pilots to locate armor and convoys from sometimes 20 or 30 miles out, meaning day or night, nothing can run its engine without the lightning pod seeing it. And in the Apache, you can use a thermal overlay to see through your cockpit at night, which covers up the cage in the cockpit, allowing for arguably easier flight when flying at night. Even in my comment section, veterans describe their thermal tech as the most important equipment they had in the field. Talk about the LRAS system or striker turrets with any experienced user, and they'll tell you stories about watching their friend give them the finger from two miles out. The higher resolution thermal gets, the higher zoom. And the higher zoom, the more and more these questions get answered even faster than a standard scope. But. That's just a scope. Arma 3 is set in 2035, so the developers had the freedom to make expectations of what thermal tech could be like in the next decade. The CSAT Viper Special Forces have bug-eyed night vision systems on their helmets, which allow them the ability to see both thermal and night vision without having to use a weapon-mounted optic at all. It's the idea that future soldier programs have played with forever, compact and lightweight thermal systems for the everyday soldier. What's crazy is that some of the devices in these games that were just fixed when a game released are now reaching mass levels of production today. In Halo 3 ODST, the visor system I mentioned earlier both amplifies light around your shock trooper, but also highlights and outlines enemies with a bright color, creating a hyper-efficient perception system for the user. The cool thing is, this is real now. Head-mounted predator vision, a type of technology that only existed in video games, is now here and available to the everyday civilian. This is my new Cody, or clip-on thermal imager. This video has been halted by this one item alone because I wanted a real one, and I waited months until I found one that was at a decent price online to finally grab it and show it to you guys. This system clips onto your existing night vision goggle, has a thermal sensor that detects radiant heat, then emits an image into the front end of your night vision's tube. This allows you to see both through your night vision like usual and see something else entirely. Anything hot 
glows. This doesn't require any visible or infrared illumination. I can spot mid-sized animals at 400 meters. I can identify them as human at about 200, and I can see if they have short sleeves or long sleeves at about 75. With no light, without having to raise my night vision to look down a thermal scope, without having to switch entirely to thermal goggles, which isn't a good idea, this allows me to have the best of both worlds, and it's something we're beginning to see in some of the biggest video games out there. And yes, I bought one specifically for this video. Thank you, IRS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 includes this type of night vision goggle in the form of rifle scopes for your stealthy ambush on the prison compound. When I first saw this, I nerded out of it. It's just such a clean image, and to see it done in a AAA title and not some obscure mod is pretty cool. But someone else has actually recreated these Cody systems in the most realistic interpretation possible, and it's in a reshade mod. Could you guess what game this mod is for, though? I'll give you a second. Kerbal Space Program. We can now activate our night vision by pressing N. Yes, it's magnificent. I love it. And this is Karma could found this shader and plopped it into Ready or Not. I don't know if he was the first one to, to make that idea, but I found his video on it and I thought it was really cool. And opening up Ready or Not to test it for the first time, I was greeted with this soundtrack. Wow, that main menu music is beautiful. Ooh, that is wonderful main menu music. Here in Ready or Not, we have this very clean PBS 14 simulation now with a Cody overlay. And it's not perfect, but it's, oh, it's so close. The actual thermal image isn't actually detecting heat in the game, so it will highlight kind of everything, even if there's hot spots in the image, like people's foreheads sticking above cover. It's actually just an edge detect shader that highlights edges. Pretty simple at recreating that look of some of the functionality of that Cody, but doesn't actually do what a Cody does. But still, look how close this is to the real life example I have for you now. It's insane just how close people are getting today with <laughs> mods for Kerbal Space Program. Yeah, the night vision is not uh, autogating. It's not, it's not adjusting to the exposure Drop the here. Drop the weapon. I could see that lady's Get head down, show me your right considerably Get easier because now. of the Cody system. If I had it off, I don't know if I would have seen her head or his head. When I turn it on though, I see that highlighted movement in there. And if this was a real Cody, it would actually highlight only them. It wouldn't, it would detect that they are the only hot things in the image and it would put an outline only around them instead of the objects in the room. So it even, it, it, it's gonna be even better than this. What I will say is probably my favorite interpretation of quad night vision goggles in a game comes from a lesser known one called Ground Branch. They had an update recently which overhauled all the MVGs in the game and wow does it really make these things pop. This interpretation helps you understand why Navy SEALs chose the quad tubed panoramic goggles for the Bin Laden raid as running simple dual tubes indoors in these tiny spaces only gives you 40 degrees of view and if the indoor area has no light, your peripheral vision outside of that tube is just kaput. It makes any person claustrophobic when you enter the tiny halls like these and are limited to those 40 degrees. So that's why we have quads. I've seen through quads only once, and even with that little bit of tourism down quad night vision goggle lane, I will say that with the utmost confidence, yup. 97 degrees of poor financial decisions. This deserves the yup of the year award for feeling extremely close to the difference between standard nods and panos. The idea of three circles for the four tubes is cool too because you've got your center tubes that look straight forwards. They kind of look like one when you actually put these things on. And then you've just got two of the extra tubes on each side, which help you see the peripheral. So having three circles here actually makes sense. And the implementation of adjustable sight brightness all the way down to in V mode is awesome. So I can actually use an EOTech rationally with nods. Easily the best interpretation of quads in a game. Ground Branch has really good IR illumination, IR laser mechanics. It's a very solid game if you want to kind of understand the basics of night vision there. But all these games obviously had someone on the team that either looked at night vision for five minutes of footage or just didn't care for realism at all or went full sin into being as authentic as possible. I definitely think 
Some are better than others, but the ones I lean closer towards are not only the ones that allow me to use them in the same ways you can in real life, but ones that allow me to find new strategies within their systems that might not even exist in the real world. In Stalker, it's harder to spot anomalies with your nods down, so you have to constantly peer around them to watch your step. Depth in every bit of gameplay matters here. Lazing a target for a buddy to spot, illuminating a dark room with an IR illuminator, small details that deepen the experience. This may seem like a device that is easy to turn on and look through and that's that, but it can be mastered. Games old and new had features I all enjoyed, but some of the oldest games had, in my opinion, some of the coolest bits of night vision history ever. Armored Cold War Assault was the only game I reviewed with PBS 5s in them. The Cold War American Nod. What a cool look. These guys definitely inspired decades of steampunk aesthetic. Even games as cold, I said cold instead of old. You know what? I'm going to go with it. Even games as cold as Delta Force Black Hawk Down had features that no other game had. Ghosting of bright objects within the tube's image is a common thing for bright lights and nods, and this game was the only one to include this quirk at all throughout this entire list. I guarantee I missed a lot of games that have night vision in them that you probably will comment down below and that's totally fine. Most of the ones I've skipped over for this video were just the simple green filter ones, but there's a lot that I missed out on. But what's awesome is that I missed out on them because there's just so many. There's a lot of games out there that try their best at creating the weird alternate reality that these little heavy toilet paper tubes give us, and we're blessed to see so many different paintings of attempts that will never be 100% right. Funny that something as simple as remaking the look of a photocathode tube can become such an insight into a game's direction, a developer's care, and an artist's art. If you came this far in this video without losing your patience, well, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, this has been a long video to make. This is two months in the making, probably. Uh, gathering all this different footage from all these different games and thinking about it and trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the video and where I wanted to take it. But I think I landed in the right spot. I need to sneeze. I lost it. If you enjoy games like these and you don't have anybody to play with, I highly suggest going to my Discord, discord.gg slash Drewski. And if you do happen to go there, then you'll probably find some good buddies to play some Arma with or any games that I mentioned in this video. There's probably a lot of people there that are happy to play with you. Um, also, if you aren't, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel for more videos like these. I always say this because you guys, uh, it, it actually works. There's thousands more people that subscribe whenever I just mention that there's 55% of you that aren't subscribed. So we're trying to hit two mil, okay? That's the, that's the personal goal of mine. Uh, if we do hit two mil, I will invade Oklahoma. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do when we get there. You know, it, it's kind of like when the when the car actually stops, what does the dog do that was chasing the car? I think we'll steal their tornadoes. Like That's all that they really have. And then we'll go to weaponize them and we'll put them... Where do we, where do we put the tornadoes? Uh, California. California is a good place. Weaponize the tornadoes and put them on California. And then we take California next. Sounds good. All right. That's the end of the video. Bye. <laughs>